My name is Desmond Mitchell. I'm the Utilities Manager here for Satana Nation. Um, today we're going to be walking you through how to properly diagnose a failed check valve and we're going to go through some of the symptoms step by step. So we're going to go through one method with a stethoscope that will make your life extremely easy for the 15 bucks that's worth, worth at Princess Auto and uh, we're going to go another route where we manually start closing valves, checking flows, running up and down. So we'll kind of walk you through some of the symptoms you're going to find if you have a leaking check valve. All right, so you walk into your lift station. First thing, Monday morning, you come in, you notice your pressure in your force main is down. Why is that? For some reason, a lot of people think, oh, you know, we're just going to default to electronics, instrumentation. So a lot of priority first goes to, oh, we must have a faulty pre a pressure sensor. I'll do, we must have a faulty pressure sensor. <clears throat> That's the easy way out. Unfortunately, with wastewater being so coarse, it's usually something a little more mechanical. Um, so if we come up to the screen here, you can see we've just pumped out. Normally this runs about 30 pounds. We're closer to 13 and we're not holding. Eventually what you're gonna start seeing is your liters per second flowing backwards. So what that is, is that's all that wastewater coming back down into your clear well. You're going to notice very high pump times and you're going to notice a high volume of water pumped versus a normal day. So pressure is going down. We know this. Let's go downstairs and let's see if we can start problem solving and seeing if we can find the source. Okay, so before you enter a sewer lift, you need to realize there's hazards. So we're gonna do a confined space entry permit before we go in, as, as you should. Uh, we're gonna put the hazards, the known hazards on here. And as the team, we're gonna come up with a plan in case H2S detectors start going off, something goes sideways. So we're looking around the site. This is where we'll be working today. There's not really a wind. So in the event the H2S detector goes off, don't panic. It goes off at a low level to give you a warning to get out. So in this case, if the alarms go off, we're going to meet by that gate. Don't get in a vehicle. Don't grab anything. Just start casually walking there. We'll slowly get up safe. So confined space, you should have a permit. If you don't have one, just go Google one. They're, they're pretty universal. So Emergency information, we'll have the fire department back us if anything happens. Please dial 911 if somebody goes down. The basics, confined space information, where we are. This is the Fish Creek lift station here on Sutena Nation. Reason for entering, diagnose, repair, check valve. Uh, scheduled start. Once we go down, we'll actually put the time, we'll put the time when we're done the work and then general information. So what we're gonna do is put everybody's information here and we're just gonna go through the list. We'll check off any hazards. You'll notice there's an H2S detector on myself, one on Carly, we're running two. We have the crane, we have our harnesses. If anything were to happen, we could safely be evac. Okay, hazard assessment. Oxygen deficient atmosphere, there's a potential for that. We have been running the scrubber, we've been getting good circulation. These have been open for the past 45 minutes. That's what this will tell us. So we know there's H2S, we know there could be oxygen deficient. Energized electrical equipment. We have equipment down there, we have meters. Safety precaution, ventilation, done. Gloves, lockout, tag out. That pump is locked out and tagged out. An H2S detector. Times two. There you go. Hey, hey watch your spell going down. All right, so we already know where the problem is. We've cheated. 
we know this. But we're going to walk you guys through the steps on how you can isolate it if you suspect your check valve has failed in your system. So you'll notice I got a stethoscope here. This is an old trick taught to me years ago. And if you guys are fixing your own stuff, if you guys are doing work on CCs, buy one of these from Princess Auto. They're 15 bucks, if that, and they're gonna make your life so much easier. What this does is it lets us listen. Metal is a really good conductor of sound, so you can hear just about anything. So we're gonna start here, because this is our closest one, and see if we can hear anything. So all we're doing is putting this to the pipe and we're listening. And I can very faintly hear something. So, Trey, pop these in, and I want you to listen with that. And I want you to touch that flat. Be very careful, because it'll be loud in your ears. Don't hit it. Touch it. And then what you do is you follow the sound, and I want you to see if you end up at our leak point. Yeah. Yeah, so work your way down and follow it. You can hear it? Yeah. You can hear it hissing, right? Yeah. So that's pretty good, because I don't even know if you knew it was this one. So you just start kind of where you get down here and then you keep following. We'll see if we can put the audio to you guys, but you can very clearly hear a high pitch hissing in this area. What we'll do is we'll close the valve and see if that hissing goes away. So, see if I can get you guys a baseline. And it's faint, it sounds scratchy almost. We'll try to give you guys some sound here. No promises if it comes through, but you'll hear it clear as day. Hopefully you're hearing something and it'll register kind of different as you move around. Okay, now we're gonna do isolate this valve. Listen again, see if it goes away. Start shutting that valve. Nice and slow. Okay, that's good. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back and have another listen. If the sound disappears, you found it. Take a listen, Trey. Tell me what you hear. Nothing. Nothing. Okay. So that tells us it's this. Okay. That's uh, one way to diagnose. What we'll do is we'll go upstairs. Remember how our pressure was dropping? Now we're gonna go up and we're gonna verify that'll hold pressure. Don't sell yourself short. Give it about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. One of the most frustrating things you can do as an operator is chase your tail. And change this and change this and change this. Check one thing at a time. Check. One thing. Check. If you start changing three or four or five things at a time and you start isolating everything, it's not gonna do you any good. We're trying to narrow it down to the specific problem, not the area. One of the things we wanna check and ensure is that we hold pressure. Before we weren't, pressure just kept dropping slowly. So 6.2, 6.3, 6.4, 6.5, 6.6, 6.7, 6.8, 6.9, 6.10, 6.11, 6.12, 6.13, 6.14, 6.15, 6.16, 6.17, 6.18, 6.19,
you know, maybe 6.1, but we really shouldn't be losing more than, you know, a few percent tops in a few minutes. So we'll check back in in 10 minutes. We'll verify that. And then once we're confident with that, we can go down and start ripping things apart. So here we are 10, 15 minutes later, 6.2. We didn't need it. We've isolated the leak. We know the problem is at the check valve. We've demonstrated it. You have to be on point with your diagnostics, guys. If, if you're not sure, don't start ripping things apart. Make sure you're 100% confident. And this is, this is the important part. This is the hard part. Never under any circumstances take off all of the bolts. We're going to start with taking every second one off. And the, the, the reason is, is because at that point we still have control. We crack this with a few bolts holding it. So let's just say something didn't go right, we have pressure on this side, we're getting messy. But all we need to do is run those bolts back in. We have control. Whereas if we had no bolts and just hammer this and pulled it off, if something went sideways, we would never get this plate back on. It'd be a nightmare. So there's a reason we do it the way we do it. Every second one.
can see here in the spring, which helps, I don't know if it's a dampening or an actuating. But okay, you know this here? This slide in here, take note of that. Not ideal. Doesn't matter how new your system is, you're always going to get this kind of fun. Okay, so you saw the gravel we pulled up. One of the things we heard when we first opened up that check valve is debris fall back down. So we came up, we ran the pumps, we're testing right now, and we're still not holding pressure. So there's probably more debris that needs to work its way out through that check valve. We're going to run the pumps for a little bit, get our levels down low, and we're going to go back and see what else showed up, clear that out too. Sometimes <clears throat> you're going to have to go back and do this. Uh, unfortunately, this kind of stuff is very much, you know, work with it until you clear up the entire thing. So we'll check that out with you. All right, so we're all wrapped up here. Um, we tore down that check valve the second time. What did we find? Flushable wipes. Um, we presume that's what built up. It probably little by little, a little bit of gravel and rocks got in, couldn't get out. And now that we've removed the mass, we'll edit it into a clip so you can see it. And now that we've removed the mass, we're holding pressure and we verified once again with the stethoscope. It's dead silent. You can't hear anything. So we fixed the problem. So we came in we found something to be different. Our pressure was low. Why? We started doing basic checks. Because it's wastewater, you're not gonna be that lucky. Chances are it's a mechanical failure, you're gonna have to get dirty. Sorry, if you have a pressure transducer fail, you're lucky. Um, but, so we walked through the diagnostics we showed you how to do that with a stethoscope and we talked about isolating individually one by one. Uh, equally as effective, isolating individually is just takes a lot more time. So we found the problem, we verified we found the problem when we pulled apart the check valve and then we tested it, it continued to fail, we ripped it apart again, now we got results. So that's about it. That's from start to finish, from a small discrepancy just pressure. So this is why you got to know your numbers, guys. This is why you check the spreadsheet. You have to pick out that pattern. And when you notice something is wrong, don't just walk away. Spend some time, start looking, because a small problem like that can turn into a big one really quick.